Shalom and good evening. My name is Kazakiel Ben Yisrael, and welcome to Voice of Our Father. And tonight's topic, this is uh, the, sec the second segment of a two-part uh, series about the resurrection okay. and how the resurrection is the true, uh, the truth in Scripture regarding the ones taken to the Father as opposed to the doctrine speaking about a rapture. So we're here today trying to decipher and show the difference between rapture and resurrection. Resurrection being uh, what's written in scripture, first resurrection, second resurrection. And we're pointing out the fact that there is no place in scripture talking about a rapture. So people a lot of times mistaken the, the first resurrection or the resurrection to life as the rapture. Mm -hmm. But the rapture kind of takes that you will be taken up, set aside, tribulation will carry on, then you will be brought back. But that's not true. And this is the thing that we're trying to point out. And Right now, I'm going to introduce the guest I have. I am uh, Elder Shadaniah Ben Israel. Shalom. Shalom. I'm Elder Aaron Ben Israel. Shalom. Shalom. So like I said, this is the second part <coughs> or the second show regarding this subject. And first off, I want to go to Job. Job. Let's go back mm. to Job. Okay. Yep. That's a good place to start. Okay. <laughs> and we want to uh bad. We want to read what Job view is about this subject. This is Job nineteen. Mm -hmm. Job nineteen. Uh-huh. Job nineteen and I'm gonna start the twenty fourth verse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Job 19, 24. That they were engraved with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, mm -hmm. that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see Yah. Mm -hmm whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another, though my heart be consumed within me. Hmm. So we see right here, Job understands that he will be resurrected. That's and correct. shall see Yah. That's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. In the latter day. In the latter it. day. Along with that I am. In the latter oh, day. Right. In the end of the end. Right. After, like Job said, he said, oh, at the end of the wrath. That's right. right. Okay. All well, right. Let's uh, turn to Revelation, okay. the 20th chapter, and we're going to read a little something here, starting at the fourth verse. Because I, I'm finding people really don't understand this resurrection. And they don't. They, they have no idea. So let's read this. It says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yehoshua, Yahshua, and for the word of Elohim, mm -hmm. and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead or in their hand. And they lived and reigned with Hamashiach a thousand years. Right. Huh? Mm -hmm. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Notice what it said, the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. It talks about the coming of the Messiah. That's right. That's the first resurrection that you have been talking about right. all the time. That's right. You see what I'm saying? So they say you would be with him forever. Right. You will be. 
but you coming down to earth. You're not going to heaven. No, no. Going back up. No. You're not going back up. <laughs> right. See, that's <laughs> the misconception. And, and, and that's what it is like. And that's what the misconception is. You're not going back up. <laughs> Those who are alive and remain, they're not remain. going back up. Right. They're not going. They're not going. Right. They're going. They're going. They're going to stay here. Right. They get ready to do battle. That's right. Then it says, "Blessed and holy is he that has part." in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power but they shall be priests of Elohim and of Hamashiach and shall reign with him a thousand years and when the thousand years are expired Satan shall be loosed out of his prison okay mm -hmm. and expound on that Go to uh, Revelation 21 okay. to show you why you're not going up to heaven. <laughs> okay? Revelation 21, 21 and 1. Okay? It said, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. For the first heaven and the first earth was passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yahuwah, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yah is with men, mm -hmm. and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and Yah himself shall be with them and be their heir. <laughs> it's telling you that he will dwell in the midst of his people. New Jerusalem coming down. Yep. You're not going up to heaven. This is what, this is called the holy city, New Jerusalem. This is the destination. This is where everybody is trying to get to. This is uh, the end. Right, where the pearly gates are. Right. That this your grandmama is, sung about. Right. And what it said, he saw a new heaven and a right. new earth. For the old heaven and old earth had passed away. So what he going to do? Take you up to heaven? Right. <laughs> and leave you up there. Then he going to destroy it and bring you back? No. Because come see, on. in 2 it says, read 2 again, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down. Mm -hmm. Coming down. No. See, that, those are the things. Now, you probably read this a, a thousand times, but you probably read straight through it. New Jerusalem coming down. And the Father shall dwell with his people. That's right. So it's all going to end up right here on earth. Why would he take you up to bring you back? That makes sense to me. <laughs> no sense <laughs> it don't all. make sense to him either. <laughs> at all. You know? But remember now, the Messiah told him, he said, it's expedient that I go. Mm -hmm. For if I go not, he can't send the comforter. But he say, I go to prepare a place for you. Okay. Could that possibly the place be that's being prepared for you is New Jerusalem? That's what it is. Oh, uh, I it thought is. so. Exactly my house, what it I is. Because the father's coming back down here. That's right. Um, let's uh, let's now try to connect what we just said. I think it is very vital that we stress to the viewing audience that what we just read in the other segment concerning Daniel, when, when, because that, it, that seems to be the biggest difference that we have, is when. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that the father already done spoke to Daniel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The father already spoke to Job. Mm -hmm. Now, Job stresses to us about this time of wrath. And we know that this time of wrath is the tribulation period. That's right. Job has stressed, has, has pointed out to us that he is going to live again after this wrath is done. Mm -hmm. That's important. We know that the father has already spoken to Daniel, and the father has told Daniel he's going to raise him in the end of the end. I don't know how much more significant you can get. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very important because that automatically means right off the top, that's squashing a midpoint tribulation time. Right. Yes, but we is. just told you that in the end that was broken down to the word cakes there, 
is the end of the end, the mm -hmm. far, the furthest, most extremity. That's it. Right. All right, now, but let's let's let's, let's finish nailing this thing in the ground because I want to pound it in the ground some more. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Matthew, the 24th chapter. chapter. And in Matthew the 24th chapter, Yeshua is, done, do, is doing a lot of speaking here. Yes, he is. The topic here is beginning with the third verse. Mm -hmm. In my Bible right here, it says, the signs of the times and the end of the age. age. Yeah. It says, 24 and 3, it says, now as he sat on the Mount Olives, talking about Christ Yeshua. Mm -hmm. It says the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, will these things be? When will these things be concerning the end? Mm -hmm. And what will be the sign of your coming? Mm -hmm. What will be the sign of your coming? They asked. And of the end of the age. Yes. And Yeshua said to them, take heed that no one deceives you, because many people have been deceived, apparently already. Yeah. <laughs> For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all those things must come to pass, but, at the, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations. For my name's sake, for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. That would include the church. <laughs> that, that, that means church. We're talking about church here. Mm -hmm. And my, mom, my main point here is church because it's the church that believes that the church is going to be taken out before yeah. <laughs> wrath comes. <laughs> yeah. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise and be deceived, and deceive many rather, and because of lawlessness will abound, the love of many shall what? Shall grow cold. cold. But he who endures, he who endures, did we talk about that earlier? Right. Elder? Yes. He did. that endures, right. because Yeshua said late, er, late, earlier, he said, for he who overcomes, oh, overcomes this time of trial, yeah. or he who endures, as he says here, mm -hmm. to the end shall what? Shall, shall be, be saved. saved. And this, gospel of the kingdom. Paul said that the gospel is what we're supposed to be teaching right now, and this is uh, Yah's salvation to man. That's mm -hmm. it. The gospel, so this is the part of the gospel. Yes, it mm -hmm. is. Of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Right. The end will come. Mm -hmm. The end will come. The, uh -huh. Okay, watch this. Now, it says here, the topic that I have here is the Great Tribulation. This says the Great Tribulation. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by the prophet Daniel, prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads him, let him understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, let him who is on the housetop not go down and take anything out of the house. And let him who is, who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days. Mm -hmm. And pray that your flight might not be in the winter mm -hmm. or, in, or on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. For there will be a great tribulation. There will be a great tribulation mm -hmm. such as such has not been since the beginning of the world. That sounds like something that Daniel was talking about. That's right. Nor will ever shall be. It says, 
and unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. Mm -hmm. But the very elect, or for, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here he is, or here is the Christ, or there he is, there is the Christ, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Mm -hmm. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Look, he is in the inner room, do not believe it. For <laughs> as the lightning comes from the, from the east and flashes to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For whenever the carcass is, there is the eagles, or there the eagles will be gathered together. Now, Yeshua is setting this thing up. Yes, he is. So the next topic that I have here, beginning in verse 29, it says the coming of the Son of Man. Now Yeshua is beginning to express his coming. What does it say? What are the first two words that we see here, Elder, in this particular verse? It says, but immediately after the tribulation of those days. What's those two words? After. Immediately, immediately after. Immediately <laughs> after the tribulation. tribulation We're talking about the tribulation. Days. That end time, that tough time, that bad time. Mm -hmm. It says immediately after the tribulation of those days of those days the sun will be darkened and then it goes through that that's far as i want to go mm -hmm. yeshua these are the words of yeshua mm -hmm. it says immediately after the tribulation of those days and it goes into the sun being darkened and the moon don't give us light and the stars will fall from heaven and for these are what? Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Okay. Right. We know this is what's going on now. But it says, mm -hmm. back up to verse 29, immediately after the tribulation. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. All right. Now, I don't know how, more, how much more plain or plainer we can get. Because you, these are Yeshua's words. Now. When we're looking at 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, and 17, and I keep going there because this is the very passage that many people use to try to explain out this rapture thing. That time is talking about when he said here, immediately after the tribulation, and mm -hmm. referring to his coming, immediately after the tribulation, that is talking about 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, and 17. Yes. Because that's when he comes. Yes. All right. Now, to be even more specific, first thing let's do, let's go to John, the 6th chapter. Mm -hmm. After we do John, the 6th chapter, I don't know how you can even, I don't know how you can, you can be, uh, Still confused about what's going to happen. What's happening? <laughs> because, because here in John Elder is in Kazakio, mm -hmm. this is where most people don't elaborate on this. We're going to go somewhere where, where it says a certain thing that most people don't talk about when it comes down to the resurrection or the rapture. Mm -hmm. That gives us pretty much an idea of when or what's going on. All right. In the sixth chapter of John, uh, let's begin with the 32nd verse. Mm -hmm. It says, Then Yeshua said to them, or then Christ said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven, referred to himself. Mm -hmm. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven mm -hmm. and gives life to the world. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Elder? That's correct. Then they said to him, Lord, give us 
this bread always. And Yeshua said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me, he who comes to me, those who are of his own, th those who come to me, shall never be hungry. He who believes in me, oh yeah, he who believes in him, would this not be people who are part of him or part of his body? That's correct. Would that not be? I don't think anybody can deny that. Because that's what we're talking about here. He who believes in me shall never thirst. Is that right? That's right. But I say to you, but I say to you, mm -hmm. that you have seen me, yet you do not believe. Mm -hmm. All that the Father gives me will come to me. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's important. Yeshua just said, or Christ just said, all that the Father gives to me, will come to me. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's right. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast That's out. Right. That's right. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent right. me. Yeah. Is that right? That's it. Okay. This is the will of of the Father who sent me. What is it? That all, what? That all that some. That some, that, Elder? No, that of all. That, that part. Is that right? Because I give that part. It says all. No, all. That what? That all oh, that he, he has, has what? Given me. Given me. I should lose nothing. nothing. But should do what, Elder? Raise it up. Raise it up. On the last day. Raise it up. On the last day. <laughs> on the, the what? Last day. On the last day. <laughs> on the last day. Yes. Important. Mm -hmm. Please make note of that. It says, on the last day. 40. And this is the will of him who sent me. That everyone who sees the Son of Man or the son, and believes in him, his own, him, in him, may have everlasting life. Right. Oh, that what we talk about? Right. Everlasting life? Yes. Resurrection? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I will what? Raise, raise him, him up, up on the last day. On the last day. <laughs> day. On the last day. Okay, on it now. What I'd like for you to do is this. We've already established what was said in the Old Testament mm -hmm. concerning when Daniel's going to be risen. Right. In the days, Kate's, end of the end. Right. Most extreme. Yes. Utmost border. Okay. Now we're in the New Testament. <laughs> Yeshua, out of his own mouth, just said that he's going to be raising that which is his yes. or what the Father has given him. And uh, that sounds like the church to me. <laughs> that sounds like the church to me because if the church is his body, that's his, ain't it? Right. But Over. the Father gives it to him, is that his? Right. Who claimed it? And he's going to raise a win in the last day, right? Yeah. Okay, Elder, let's do this thing for the New Testament. <clears throat> in your, uh, your concourse there, mm -hmm. could you look at the word last for me? Sure can. <laughs> right, now I'm we first up. did it in the, in, in the Hebrew. Yeah. Now we're going to find out. Since this was written in the Greek, we're going to mm -hmm. find out what the Greeks said about it. Or what was the, what was the context of the word last used? What was the context? 2078. 2078? Yes, it is. Good. 2078. Yes, it is. 2078 mm -hmm. says, Esket, Esketo. Uh-huh, Esketo. Right. 2078. Right. Okay. It says, from 2192, mm -hmm. the sense of contrivance, mm -hmm. farthest. Well, stop. Stop. What, what is the elder? 
Farthest. It says farthest. F A R T H E S T. Farthest. Right. Farthest sounds to me like, uh, if we're talking in the last day, the farthest point <laughs> of the last day. Right. But last day is, uh, or the end is what? The three, three and a half years. Is that right? Now? Right. So at the farthest point, that would mean the three and a half years. Right. But here's something even better. Okay, go ahead, though. It says final. Final. <laughs> at the final. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the final part of the end, the end of the end, yeah. the furthest point of the end. Right. Oh, is that, but tell me this. That's in the Greek, though, right? That's a Greek yeah. word, isn't it? But is that, is that the same thing? Is that saying the same thing? Or is that the same message that was given to Daniel? Is that saying the same thing? Yes, it is. Sound is. like it's saying the same thing to me. Does that sound like to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that seems to me... That seems to me that there's some sort of consistency going on right here. Yes, mm -hmm. it there is. is a consistency going on here. Yes, it and is. we just read it coming out of the very mouth of Yeshua. Yep. He said he's going to read, he's going he's gonna to raise what's his in the last day mm -hmm. or at the furthest point. That's right, at the end. At the end of the end. That's it. Right? Just drop it down right here. In 53, it says, I'm just going to reconfirm this. It says, Then Yeshua said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, unless you receive him and believe that he is who he is, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him at the last day. Same thing. That's it. <coughs> Let's go to uh, Isaiah, <coughs> because uh, we're going to look at, we are looked at Job, mm -hmm. and we're going to look at the prophet Isaiah, who spoke on this before even Daniel spoke on okay. the resurrection. All right. We're going to go to Isaiah 26. Twenty-six and sixteen. Okay, and this is—is is this the same subject? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the prophet Isaiah. Twenty-six, sixteen. It says, yeah, "Why in trouble have they visited thee? Have they visited thee? They poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them, mm -hmm. as a woman with child." who draweth near the time of a delivery. Now hold that thought, because we're going to go someplace else, quoting that same passage. Mm -hmm. in, is in pain and crieth out in her pains, so have we been in thy sight, O Yahweh. Mm -hmm. We have been with child, we have been in pain, we have, as it were, brought forth wind. Mm -hmm. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body, shall they arise. Mm. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, ye that dwell in the dust, <coughs> for thy dew is like the dew, herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Mm -hmm. This is the resurrection. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. In the days of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. He said, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, mm -hmm. shut thy doors about thee, hide thyself, mm -hmm. as it were for a little moment, mm -hmm. until the indignation is past. Mm -hmm. For behold, Yahweh cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth mm -hmm. for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Mm -hmm. But you know what, Elder? Plenty of devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Them brothers there in the Old Testament, they write about something about the resurrection. And yeah, maybe that's true, but they never knew nothing about the mystery. You know, the church, the mystery. So they wouldn't know about the rapture coming because that was because that would concern a mystery, and they would know nothing about the rapture or the resurrection of the church because they didn't know nothing about that. But what do we just, what do we just read what Yeshua said? 
Because obviously he knew about the mystery and it all. He knew about the church. Of course he did. So, it all. So, so if you're thinking about even going to that point, talking about some mystery, mm -hmm. you sure knew all about the mystery. Because that was all about his. Mm -hmm. And what we just read is what he said. Now, I want to see you go around what he say and make it something other than what he just what we just read in John the sixth chapter. You can't. You, but, there's no way you can. But do it. you it's can, we can. We can go to the end. We can go to Revelation. Exactly. We can go, go to two chapters of Revelation. Okay, let me go to Revelation right here to springboard from what Isaiah talked about. Uh huh. Go to Revelation twelve. Okay. 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 Go ahead. Revelation 12 and 1. And there appeared a great one in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, pain to be delivered. That's what Isaiah just got through talking about. Yeah. Let me finish reading. And there appeared another one in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads, mm -hmm. ten horns, seven crowns upon his head. Mm -hmm. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast him to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, who was ready to be delivered to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a male child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto Elohim, unto his throne. Mm -hmm. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she have a place prepared by Yah that they should feed her 3,000, I'm sorry, 1,200 and three score days. Okay. All right, now, that's talking about who? Israel. Israel. Okay, all right, now, this portion of Israel, mm -hmm. are, th are these, or is this what we call the remnant? Yes. Okay. Also, oh, then, <clears throat> are the are, would these be more negative or would they be more positive? This is the church. Okay. Right. So would that be more negative or would that be positive? Be positive. Okay. That would be positive. Okay. If that's positive, and we're talking about a three and a half year time or uh, time, and we're talking about being hid, why are they why are they hiding? Because they're being persecuted. Exactly. Yep. During what period of time? Three and a half years. Yeah. Right. We so just this read three right. and a half right. years. And this yep. is the end time, is that correct? That's right. Okay. Excuse me if I'm wrong, or pardon me if I'm wrong. Um, this rapture thing, I believe, is a principle that's taught. Mm -hmm. And one of the one of the one of the, the elements of of this of this, this principle called the rapture, mm -hmm. is that the only people that are here or left here are those that are unsaved or those that are not positive. Right. Okay. I understand what you're saying. Then what you just read to me, uh -huh. what it sounds like to me, is that during this time there are going to be someone here that is positive. Of course yeah. it is. It's going to be the church, the true church. Exactly. And that's my point. The whole thing here is, is that during this time frame, this last or this end of time, there are going to be people that are here that represent the Most High. That's right. And represent Yeshua. That's right. So what about the people that I thought they were all supposed to be gone or taking them out of here? That's what we're saying. It's a fairy tale. Exactly. That's what we're doing this show. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly it. You're going to have to go through it, viewing audience. You're going to have to go through this. There's no out. You're going to have to survive it. That's the whole point of it. The tribulation period is a time of testing to see those who pass the test. Now, my question is this. How can you pass a test without taking Man, the test? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you can't pass a test unless you take the test. How do you pass the test when you don't know what the test is? You can't pass it. You're going to have to endure it the best way you know how. And that's what we're talking about. All right, now, 
You just went to, that was in, you in the 12th chapter of Revelation? Right. right. Now, what I want to also hit on here in Revelation uh, is the chapter that is going to line directly up with 1 Thessalonians again. Mm -hmm. Fourth chapter, 16 and 17 verse, 18 verse, etc. Let's look at the chapter number 11 of Revelation. Now, it says in the 11th chapter of Revelation, beginning at verse 15, the topic here is the seventh trumpet. And it says the kingdom proclaimed. It says, then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty and four elders sat before El on their thrones, fell on their faces and worshiped Yah, saying, mm -hmm. We give thanks, O Lord, it says, Lord God Almighty here, mm -hmm. the one who is and who was and who is to come. Because you have taken your great power and reign. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come, and the time of the dead, and the time of the dead that they should be judged. And you shall reward your servants, the prophets and the saints. You shall reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great. This is talking about a resurrection. Yes, it is. And it says here, you should reward your servants, the prophets, and the saints. Mm -hmm. That's talking about resurrection of all those who are going to be resurrected. You see. So we are here talking about what the resurrection is all about. The saints of the Most High the servants of the Most High, and the servants of the Most High. So this is very important. Out of everything that we see, we see something lined up. Now, I have heard before, in the past, I've heard that, uh, that in Revelation, the 19th chapter, this is talking about people who were taken up or the church was taken up and they're in heaven already um, I believe that the principle of the rapture is that you have Daniel's 70th week and most Christians believe that that uh, in the middle of the week or at the three and a half year period of time uh, the church is going to be taken out of the world they're going to go back up into heaven and they're going to remain there for three and a half years. And after they remain there for three and a half years, then Christ is going to come back down with them. And that's when we have uh, uh, war, Armageddon, what have you, and the kingdom being set up. I assume that's what they believe uh, on, on the latter part of that. Um, but here in Revelation, the 19th chapter, is what I've heard some people believe to be the church in heaven talking during those three and a half year period. It says, 19.1, it says, after these things I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven. Hear that? See that? Mm -hmm. See that, Elder? It says, yeah. after these things I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven. Mm -hmm. And this is supposed to be the church that's in heaven. Mm -hmm. Her loud yeah. voices. This is John revealing something that he, he, mm -hmm. was, he was shown. It says, saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication. Uh -huh. And he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed for her. 
again they said, Hallelujah, her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I, be, and I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as a sound of many waters, and as a sound of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns, 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 <laughs> yeah. reigns. Yeah. That's important. He reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. Mm -hmm. The marriage of the Lamb has come. Mm -hmm. And his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the linen, or the, for the fine linen, is the righteousness acts of the saints. Then he said to me, John says, Right, blessed are those who are called, the called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, See that you do not do that. This is what John is saying, of course, to the, to the, uh, to the Malachi, the angel that is revealing this to him. Uh, he fell down to worship the angel, and the angel said, get up. Right. Uh, he said, for I am what? For I am a fellow I'm servant sorry. here of your brethren who gave, who have the testimony of Yeshua, worship El. He said, for the testimony of Yeshua is the spirit of prophecy. Yeah. But go back to Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Turn to Isaiah, the 49th chapter. Let me, and if I explain something right here, Mm-hmm. Basically, what I just read to you is not about the church doing that three and a half year period. It is yeah. about those who were just resurrected yeah. because Yeshua is about to reign. Yeah. Not that they're in heaven for those three and a half years. Right. These are the people that were resurrected because didn't it say in the first Thessalonians that he will bring with him? Remember how we kept talking about with right. him? With him, with him, with him, those that are what? With him already? Right. These are the ones that were with him already that came, what? Came into, came back to life, life. at the time of his coming. Yes, this it. is at the time of his coming, not during the three and a half year period. Right. When he comes, right. that's when this is. So in case you thought that this was about a three and a half year period and, and at some point they were talking about, in heaven they are talking about, something they're conscious of what's going on and they're talking, that's not true. This is at the point that they were resurrected. Right. And, and, and the, the Father is getting ready to set up the kingdom. That's why we under, underline the word reign. Reign. Because his reign is here and now. Yeah. Because he's getting ready to reign. That's it. But now, we talked about salvation and you talked about all. Mm -hmm. Right. We're going to read something here. And what we are doing? Isaiah 49. Mm -hmm. And the topic it says, salvation reaches to the ends of the earth. <laughs> listen to this. It says, listen to me, O islands. Oh, yeah. Okay. And pay attention, you people, from afar. <laughs> now, remember, he considered Israel near. Okay. And everything that was far off was the rest of the world. Okay. That's so right. listen to this, what it says. Mm -hmm. It says, Yahweh called me from the womb, from the body of my mother. He named me. Mm -hmm. And he made me, and, and he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the, in the shadow of his hand, he has concealed me. And he has also made me a select arrow. Mm -hmm. He has hidden me in his quiver, and he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will show my glory. But I said, I have toiled in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely the justice due to me is with Yahweh. 
and my reward with my heir. And now, says Yahweh, who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Yaakov back to him in order that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the sight of Yahweh, and my glory is my strength. He says, it, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up tribes of the tribe of Yaakov to restore the preserved <laughs> ones of Israel. I will also make you a light of the nations so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. I'm going to stop right there. Okay. Who, was talk, who was being talked about here? Gentiles. Huh? Gentiles here? Right. But who was he talking about being, would be raised up as a light to them? Oh, Israel. Huh? Correct. That's right. Huh? And in, within this context, he talked about hiding somebody in the quiver. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the Messiah here. Mm -hmm. Who was raised up. Huh? Didn't it say that the rest of the world would look to him as a light? Mm -hmm. Huh? Here it is, right here. Okay. So salvation had been promised all the time. That's right. Mm -hmm. It just hasn't been delineated like it had been in what we call the New Testament, to where people could really see it. But it's been here all the time. The Father always had made that preparation for us to get back to him, uh -huh. huh? for mankind mm -hmm. to get back to him. Because as you always said, Elder, he had to make that decision, whether he destroyed, throw it all away, or he had another plan. Yeah, exactly. And the other plan he put into practice. Exactly. Uh -huh. The Father wanted to give us eternal life again. That's right. So, I mean, we, we, we're talking about, uh, I mean, we're talking about, right, the salvation, mm -hmm. Israel uh, being raised up to bring the world to salvation. And uh, bringing it down to this resurrection, and we're trying to uh, show that this rapture thing is out of order. It is definitely out of order. So yeah. go to Revelations, and we're gonna read this, and we're gonna read uh, about this rapture. I mean, I'm sorry, about the re resurrection. <laughs> So we won't mistake, it won't, you won't, after we read this, it should be another mistake about a rapture. Uh, it's Revelation 7. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to say 7 and 9. Okay. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. He say, after this I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations. That's what Elder, you just got through yeah, reading. Just got through reading that. Okay. <laughs> just got so, through reading that. And kindreds and peoples and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to Yahweh, who sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. Mm -hmm. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four living creatures fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped Yahweh, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be unto our Elohim forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, Who are these who are arrayed in white robes? And from where did they come? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they who came out of the great tribulation. Right. 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 Well, what the church try, will try to say here is, or those who believe in the rapture will try to say here, is these are the people who became believers in the tribulation. That's impossible. <laughs> Absolutely. This, this right here absolutely. says, These are they who are raised. Well, I'm sorry. These are they who came out, came out 
of the Great Tribulation right. Right. and have washed their robes and right. made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Right. These are people who already really? were believers, believers at the beginning right. of, of the, the Great tri tribulation. tribulation. They right. were already believers. Right. They survived. Those, these are a part of the people who remained. remained. That was the whole, the whole point, point of Yeshua saying, for he that overcometh. Um, and he was it. talking to the church. He wasn't talking to just a person here that who happened to be one who survived the tribulation and, and they became a believer. They were already believers at the midpoint yep. of, of Daniel's 70th week. Right. So at the midpoint of Daniel's 70th week, all of these people, this, this multitude here, these people here that were positive, were, were, were positive those people already were believers. Yep. They already were Yeshua's. They were already given to Yeshua by the Father. They had to go through this thing. Yeah. And yep. that's why he made a point when he said that I should not lose nothing. Yeah, that's right. Because he knew it was going to be a time of trouble. And even the very elect were going to be fooled during this time. That's right. That's yes. the whole point. It's not about, about, about you being taken out of here and you're not going to have to go through it. Right. It's about you having to endure it. That's right. That's right. Now, jump back to... The fourth verse in the seventh chapter. And we're going to look and see who led this multitude that no man could number. All right. All right. The fourth, seventh verse, I'm sorry, seventh chapter, the fourth verse. And I heard the number of them which was sealed. Mm -hmm. And there was sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. That ain't all. These were Pacific people that were sealed. Right. Not just 144,000. Right. Because we just read about a number that no man could number. number right. Right, okay, right. let's finish reading. That's right. Of the tribe of Yehuda was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Naphtali was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh or Manasseh yeah. was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon. Seal 12,000 of the tribe of Lawi was sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Issachar was sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Zebulun was sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Yosef was sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Benjamin was sealed 12,000. These it. are the ones who led the number that no man could number. That's right. That's right. So I had to point that out. Right. Mm -hmm. Israel. Exactly. Israel. The servant. In, in, in Revelations, in the right. end. That's right. So you got to understand. <laughs> that he talked about in the beginning. That's right. <laughs> so you must understand, you must be a part of the children of Israel, which is the true church. Oh, turn, I, I want you to turn to Exodus, the fourth chapter. Just in case y'all had heard this nonsense that the only sons of, of, of Elohim was Christians. I want you to I want you to hear something here. Just in case just in case you never read this, I want you to read this. Are you there? Exodus twelve. Exodus no, the fourth chapter. I'm sorry. And I'm gonna read something to you. Verse twenty two. And I want you to clean your ears out and anybody ever tell you this again, you, you can take them right here. It says, and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, this is Moshe being sent to Pharaoh, mm -hmm. the father telling him to say this mm -hmm. to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. He says, thus saith Yahweh, Israel is my son, mm -hmm. Bane, son. Mm -hmm. Even my firstborn. Do you understand what that means? I don't ever want to hear that again, that Israel is just a servant. It says, Israel is my son, mm -hmm. even my firstborn. That's why Israel had to lead you to the father in the beginning, and he had to lead you to him in the end. Exactly. Huh? Exactly. Simple. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Huh? And then he says, and I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. 
And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, mm -hmm. even thy firstborn. The father make, he making the comparison there. If you don't let my firstborn go, I'm going to kill yours. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. See, so what you better do is y'all better get in this book. That's right. And begin to in, read they're, it. They're not, they're not in it at all. They're not in, well, they're not in it. Then they're going to have to or else they're going to die <laughs> in their sin. <laughs> to, to drive home a final point, of, <laughs> let, me, let me say this to the viewing audience. This is very important. I'm going to be real quick. I'm going to be very fast on this. If you go to John, the 11th chapter, mm -hmm. and we will begin with the 17th verse. Mm -hmm. John 11, 17. Mm -hmm. Topic here is, I am the resurrection and the life. Yep. <laughs> so when Yeshua came, he found that he had already been in, in the tomb, referring to Lazarus here. We know that. Mm -hmm. He says, so when Yeshua came, he had found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Mm -hmm. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had, four, had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother, who was Lazarus. That's right. So Lazarus was a brother of Mary and Martha. Mm -hmm. It says, now Martha, as soon as she heard that Yeshua was coming, or Christ was coming, went to meet him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Yeshua, or Christ, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Mm -hmm. But even now I know that whatever you ask of Yah, Yah will give you. Mm -hmm. Yeshua said to her, your brother will rise again. Mm -hmm. Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again yeah. in the resurrection yeah. at the last yeah. day. Yeah. All right. We already went over what the last day was. Mm -hmm. Yeshua said that he was going to bring back or raise up what the Father gave him, mm -hmm. what was his in the last day. The same time we see that Lazarus was a part, was going to be resurrected in the last day. Right. All right, Peter, James, the apostles, 